Well, what's up, Rose? Matt Rosick. This will be work in progress number one on the quarter scale Old Man He Man. Just did the intro video and I'm gonna start kind of trying to fit some of this base together and getting it glued. So we'll see how far I get today. It's only, uh, I started kind of late this afternoon, this, this today. So I've been playing with the base, trying to figure out the best order to do this because uh, although the print is very good, as usual, there's some fitment issues, some things don't want to quite fit. Um, you know, things flex, this resin's flexible. So I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to um, kind of get Thundercat? I gotta look up this guy's name. Hold on one second. Okay, I was way off. Cringer. <laughs> and then he turns into Battle Cat. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've watched T-Man. Uh, so I'm gonna work on his skull first, I think. Um, so first thing we gotta do is I'm gonna go in and just kind of sand these support marks a little bit. Um, just to smooth them out. And this is just some 180 grit sandpaper. And uh, hopefully this will help things fit together a little bit better. We kind of run into problems is really like the the walls tend to warp a little bit through the printing process. Um, so, because printing resin is, stays pretty flexible, it's not like super um, rigid like casting resin is once it's once it's done. So, we're gonna clean up these print marks a little bit, the support marks, and this will also give the epoxy something to stick to a little bit better. It'll be slow going because I'm going to epoxy a couple pieces, uh, clamp them together, let that dry. Epoxy clamp, epoxy clamp. So again, like I said, Vaughn's uh, print settings are pretty good. The support marks, the damage from the support marks is pretty low. This is actually, a, I thought this was 180, that's 240. I want, uh, actually, I don't want 180, here's some 180. I like 180 because it just stands better for this type of stuff. It just, a little quicker. I'm assuming uh, Bond has cured this thing inside and out. It looks like it does. I don't smell any resin, so it's a good sign that he has. I think I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. And I kind of have the base here kind of clamped together to see if I can how things, because, uh, you know, until things start getting glued together, you really don't know how they fit. When everything's loosey-goosey, oh, it fits great. And you start gluing it together, and like, oh, it doesn't fit so great. Um, so this part goes in here, and this will go into this side of the base, like this. And there's some outlines in the base <coughs> where the uh, Battle Cat skull goes. Um, I might have to go back and do some re-sculpting once it's all glued together and kind of hopefully, hopefully I won't have to re-key anything on the base. Um, that's kind of what I'm dreading. But So I think I glued this part together first because it fits pretty well. Um, I'm just going to kind of get rid of some of these support marks. Hopefully, uh, facilitate, hopefully uh, reduce any um, interference from those. It also creates a sanding scratch that will give the epoxy something better to, to adhere to. So ideally I can use five minute epoxy because it just kicks off quicker. But I think on some of the other parts that will take a little more time for clamping. I may have to go to like a 15 minute epoxy or maybe a 30 minute epoxy. Which gives me more work time, but it just means that it's going to take longer for that to cure. Like 30 minute epoxy doesn't cure for 24 hours. Full cure. Um, you can handle it after about 10 or 12 hours, um, but ideally you let it sit for a full 24 for a full cure. So what's going to take also uh, quite a bit of time is once everything's glued together, you have to go in and fix all the seams and do all the sculpting between all the seams and stuff. Because even though everything kind of fits well, there's gaps, there's textures you got to sculpt. There's all these branches that line up on the side of the base. I'll have to go and sculpt those and add the branch texture to them. So quite a bit of um, work to do before we even talk, start talking about paint. <laughs> so yeah, these things are a lot of work. I mean, they're cool, but they're expensive to do. They take a lot of work. They're time consuming. Okay, so that's pretty good. Again, I'll show a little bit of this on camera. And like this part fits really well because there's only one key. And so as you see here, 
once I glue this together, I'll have to go through and I'll have to fix this seam and that gap. I'll have to re-sculpt some of the rock texture in there. So when I do this, I'll clamp it. Um, I'll show you how I clamp it once I get it glued and clamped, but then I'll have to go through and smooth out the um, seams. And then in the end, we'll have to do some sculpting uh, and recreate some of this rock texture and stuff. So yeah, so that's the thing with these big guys like this. I get asked all the time, can you print stuff this big? Yeah, you can. You have to cut it up into a lot of pieces and then you have to put it back together and fix all the seams. So you can do it. Um, I get questioned by producers all the time. Can you print this in quarter scale? Sure, you have to cut the base up into four or five, six pieces. And then they put it back together and seam it. So they're like, because, you know, ownage charges, this print would be seven, eight thousand dollar print from ownage. You know, for me to print this and do all the prep work, it's probably, pro you know, three, four thousand dollars because of the amount of time it takes to print it and then prep it. Um, I'm just doing the prep work on this, but you know, the printing is long, the supplies are expensive. So yeah. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to sand that and we get this glued together. Um, so let me get some epoxy mix. So what I like to do is I like to go over several times my clamping, um, how I'm going to clamp something. So for this, I kind of already worked it out. Um, I'm going to clamp here. Use these keys, these clamps fit right in there. And clamp that pretty well. Now, you don't want to clamp too tight because you don't, it'll shift too much. But I'm trying to close up the gap as much as possible, too. So I clamp there. And then I come over here. And then I can clamp here using these keys. Kind of like that. So and then like, so that may not work because the keys are slanted. I had it set up in a way that would work. I think maybe I did this. Is it here? I had this. I had this in a way where it worked out. Maybe it was this way. And I've got these clamps pretty tight. So then what I like to do is, before I do any gluing, I like to work through the process of clamping. Because you want to try to make these edges line up as best as you can. The keys have some play in them. So that's another thing. These keys have quite a bit of play in it. So... So kind of making sure these are as smooth as possible, lined up as best as possible. Look right there. That's got a little bit of a lip there, really. To, so I can use a little bit of a rubber mount to kind of try to tap things together to see if that's gonna work. Not hitting hard, I don't wanna break the print. The most important part on this part, at least, is the outside. That's what you're gonna see. You're not gonna really see the inside here. But um, more likely I'll have to sand this smooth and then re-sculpt some of this rock texture, which is better than trying to do it on the outside where you're gonna see it more. So another thing is when you're doing stuff like this, like, okay, what am I gonna see when it's all put together? Where do I wanna spend my time um, making sure it looks the best it can look? Again, since um, I charge by the hour, I'm always thinking that in my head. Where's my time best spent to get it to look as best as I can while still trying to get it to my client <laughs> for the least amount possible that I, that I would charge. So you kind of have to factor those things when you're working on stuff, you know, how long is that going to take? Okay. So that's pretty good. I will have to do some sculpting in here. So if I clamp here and I clamp here, this all lines up pretty good. The only real work I'll have to do is on the inside here. It actually lines up pretty nice. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to try to slide this to the side. Get this out of the way. <coughs> now, the one thing I don't have, which I wish I had, were some epoxy brushes. Uh, just some cheap, cheap brushes. Let's see if I got anything in here I don't mind getting rid of. 
old brushes. Epoxy brushes are great because they're just they're one time use. You turn them on, you're done. Um, I think these eye brushes are pretty shitty. I'm gonna work with epoxy brushes on. Uh, Use this foam brush, I guess. Just so I get a nice, even amount of epoxy on that. And I'm gonna put a towel on my lap. So all my clothes that I own are just destroyed because they're full of paint and epoxy. <laughs> it's just, it's like I don't have any decent clothes in my wife's like, your clothes look like shit. It's like, yeah, because I work in them. I never change my clothes when I work, I should, but I just know. Because I kind of get in working mode and I just get going. All right, so this is the first part we're gonna glue together is this guy right here. And I'm gonna use five minute epoxy for this. I'm gonna mix up. Oh, before I do, do that, I wanna make sure I have um, some thinner ready to go, at least some um, alcohol and a paper towel. And clean up any ooze out. Okay. So I use been using this hobby. This it's not Hobby Town. It's um, for the brand name. It's BSI Bob Smith Industry, but it's packaged by Hobby Town. One thing I don't like about this is that the hardener and the, the resin are the exact same color. So sometimes I'll put one in my cup and I'll turn around and do something. And I'll forget which one that I put in my cup first. So, but it dries clear. But I just don't like the fact that they're the same color and the lids are the same color too. So I'm gonna mix up like 20 uh, mils of this. I'm gonna go through quite a bit of epoxy on this piece. Separated. So it's one to one. And Foxy is expensive. So I'll go probably through on this kit fifty to sixty dollars of epoxy. Just in glue. <laughs> so So mix it up well. Now I'll have about three minutes to kind of get this together and clamped. Because I have the amount of epoxy I have mixed up. all the surfaces. Okay. Up to the side. Just remember how I had this clamped to fit well. Hopefully we'll get some ooze out. Ooze out's good so you can clean it up. Bye. Hey, good luck on your test today. Go over your quit your notes. Ask your friends to quiz you. Tell Alina to have you guys quiz her on science. She needs a good grade since she's failing. Okay, so we're gonna kind of wipe this up as we go. And then I had it clamped here. Okay, there we go. 
you want to make sure you get as much of that excess off before it cures. Once it's cured, the epoxy does not like the sand. It's gummy. Okay, so we're going to work on the alignment over here. A little bit. Sometimes you have to unclamp and move things around. try to close up all the gaps because I'll never get them all closed. I just try to get it lined up as best I can. So this part down here that just hits the base that's pretty even. That's gonna have a little bit of work. Here, see what that does. There we go. Okay. So that's going to kick off in about now. <laughs> it's kicking off in the cup. So, yeah, the five minute epoxy, you got about, it says five minutes working time, but it's more like two or three. It all depends how much you have mixed up too. The more you have mixed up, the quicker it's gonna kick off because it's exothermic reaction. As it heats up, it kicks off faster. I'm just gonna go here and try to get as much of the ooze out as I can. Hopefully that'll help fill some of the gaps. Shit. So I get for trying to move this around too much while the blue's curing. Hopefully the glue's still kicking off so I can clamp it back and we're back in business. Yeah, you don't want to fling your clamps around while you're too much because they'll, they'll come loose. Okay. So there's one part epoxy. We'll let that sit for 10, 15 minutes. And um, I should be able to take the clamps off. Alrighty, so I got the first two parts of uh, Battle Cat glued together. I'm working on clamping and gluing the first two parts of the base together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the base together because I, I want to make sure that once Battle Cat is together, I can take them on and off the base um, and then everything lines up. So I think it's better to get the base together, get that kind of figured out, and then put Battle Cat on the base and try to glue them together while in there and then fix any uh, gaps or anything on Battle Cat. That way I know he fits on the base correctly. Uh, Cause I was looking at this and I was like, well, if I put a Battle, to get Battle Cat together first and then put the base together and then try to put him on the base, he may not line up. So, <coughs> and there goes one of my clients. At least keep dropping on my foot. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna put the base together, get this kind of all lined up as best I can. And then once this is done, we'll uh, work on getting Battle Cat on there and fitted. Okay, so what I have now is I have basically two halves of the base, two, two, two halves. So I glued these two together, clamped them together, let the epoxy cure. Glued these two together, clamped together, let the epoxy cure. Try to get up, what I was trying to do is get the outside edges lined up as best as possible where all the detail is because that's the most important. So there's less putty work and sculpting to do. Same thing on this side. Got this lined up pretty good. I'll have to go in here and kind of sand this down and sculpt all this detail. Then what I did is once that epoxy cured, I went in with a, a power sander. Sanded this smooth because these two edges didn't meet very well. And you'll see here in a second, there's quite a bit of a gap in the middle, but that's okay. Um, sand this smooth, scuffed it up so I can put epoxy on it. And the same thing here, clean the ball support marks with the power sander, scuff that up. But now, when I put these two halves together, there's going to be a pretty good gap in the middle. I'm not worried about gaps in the middle. 
What I'm more concerned about is getting the outside edges lined up as closely as possible because that's where all the details are and the sculpting is going to take place. So right now, if I try to clamp this side together and get this lined up, so I'm just going to like come here, I'll clamp this. This is where you kind of kind of you play with your clamping technique and the order in which you do things. If I clamp this together, I can get this lined up pretty good. There's still some gaps and stuff here. Um, I'll have to do some work here to get those to fit. And then now if I try to spin this around, hold on one second. Again, I really need more space. <laughs> this thing is so big. If I try to spin this around and clamp this side, it doesn't want to go together. So, so I come in here and I start clamping. Uh, it kind of does, but this side opens up. So what I think I need to do is I think I need to heat up or get some a heat gun going. Again, this side, looking at this sculpt, this side is easier to putty and sculpt and fix. Over this side, it's got tree branches and stuff. So this is the challenge when you're doing these really big pieces and you gotta cut them up into a lot of pieces is getting everything lined back up. Just because it's digital doesn't mean you print it and it's gonna all fit. <laughs> it's kind of a misconception. So if I clamp this side together first, I do this, I get this side meeting up pretty good. Like that meets up pretty damn good. Pretty smooth, minimal putty work. But now, so again, you kind of plan your clamping, your order of clamping. Now, if I come in here, I bought this, I bought a new clamp. This is a bigger clamp. It's got more clamping power um, for specifically for this project. They're needed clamps these big. If I come in here and try to clamp this, you got to pick spots on the print that can withstand the pressure of the clamps. So like right here, it's pretty solid. I come in here to try to clamp this. You gotta, you gotta kind of judge it. How much pressure can I put on this before it's gonna start causing issues? You know, you don't wanna break anything. So, so it's actually, before I did all the sanding here, I couldn't, I couldn't get, I could not get this to close up even as much as I have here. There's a lot of interference. I'm just going slow, a little bit of time. Okay, so now I hear something wanting to give away. This part right here is wanting to give away. <laughs> so you gotta listen for things that are gonna start cracking and possibly breaking. Um, so I think I'm going to, I think if I can heat, I think where my interference is in this curve right here. So I think I'm gonna heat this up a little bit with the heat gun. See if we can't get some flex in it to flex. So you gotta be careful with the heat gun too. So I got it set on high. Just keep it moving. Warm this up. Just stay away from my glue joints. I don't wanna soften the glue. But I feel like it's in this curve right here that I'm getting the interference. And this will soften up pretty quickly. Just keep it moving. You don't want to melt your resin. Do this over here a little bit. Okay, nice and pliable there. Hopefully that doesn't cool down too fast. We're going to kind of do this side too. This whole thing where it's just softening this all up. So when they cut this, they kind of put these waves in there, which I kind of get to a point, but I think those are causing more issues rather than just want to cut straight, kind of straight across and put keys in. I want to make sure that that's not cooling down too much over there. So 
So just keep the heat gun moving. Don't hold it because with it going on high like this, it heats up pretty quick. Okay, let's put that now. Let's see if we can't before this cools down too much. Get this to close up. That's like that's where that needs to be. It's right there. Okay, and then while this is still hopefully still pliable, I need more room. I need. I may have to heat this up again because it's probably going to cool down by the time I get this clamped the way I want. Okay, that side is easy to clamp. It's this side that's hard to get to. But heating it up has helped. I can tell it's a little more pliable. Uh, let's see if I can do it in this key here. Nope, not the right angle. The best angle is right here, but I'm afraid I'm going to break something. Okay, that's actually pretty good there. I'm not worried about these edges up here on top. That's all gonna get, I'm gonna go in there with the power sander and sand that smooth. So while this is still warm and pliable, I'm gonna get clamps on and hopefully it'll, as it cools, it'll kind of hold that shape. I'd like to close up this gap on the bottom here a little bit if I can. I should have gotten another one of these clamps. These are just, they're like, these clamps are like 30 bucks a piece, so. <laughs> I don't want to spend $60 on clamps. Okay, that's actually not too bad. There's going to be a little gap down here I'll have to fill and putty. I'm going to let this cool down for a little bit. And then I'll probably heat it up again. I'll probably do this a few times. Heat, cool, heat, cool, clamp it, let it sit before I try to epoxy. Because I want to make sure that when I go to epoxy it, I can do it relatively quickly. Um, so I have to mix up a lot of epoxy. And uh, as you as you know, the more you mix up, the faster it kicks off. Because um, what I don't, what I want to do is make sure that, I wish I could clamp. I wish there was a key here. Because like on these, I can use the keys kind of as clamping points. Keys make great places for clamps. They have good um, grabbing power. Like right there. So yeah, so it's a matter of heating, clamping, cooling, heating, clamping, cooling. Okay, so I got everything as fitting as best I could. I've epoxied this, I've clamped it, and let this sit for about an hour. Um, then I can, I can undo the clamps then. That's when it gets full cure. It's gonna be a lot of sanding and putty work and sculpting to do to get this to look decent, but I've got it together as best I could, um, lined up the best I could. So yeah, it's just gonna be challenging to get this all looking good, but we'll get there eventually. It'll just take some time. Um, again, working. Luckily, uh, Bond printed this with some nice thick uh, walls. Looks about like three millimeter walls for the um, for the print. Uh, the bottom side is going to need a lot of filling to to take care of all the concave surfaces because when you have big flat surfaces like that and a hollow print, they tend to as a as it cures and shrinks, it tends to get a concave um, uh, shape to it. No big deal. Just fill the drain holes. I'll show you how I do those. Um, with some just some plastic uh, some plot plate or styrene so I can put Bondo over the whole bottom and sand it smooth but so this needs to dry for about an hour or so uh, before I can take the clamps off and then I'll fill the bot and I'll show you how to how I fill the holes in the bottom get that smooth and then it's gonna be a matter of sanding all these edges smooth and going back into re-sculpting and all the details along the seam line so that's gonna take some time but we've got it together um, and I think this is gonna work I'll really know if it works well once I get Battle Cat together and see how he keys in and fits in the base. So um, we'll come back once I get the clamps off.
Okay, so I'm doing the last bit of clamping and gluing here on the base. So I got Battle Cat on the base, clamps on the head just to kind of get it to make sure it's going to fit in there. I'll have quite a bit of work to do on this piece. Uh, for some reason, I can get it to line up here, but once you get to this part, there's a pretty good step. So yeah, so all these seams will get sanding and re-sculpting, um, but I can take the head off and on the base um, while it's together, which is kind of nice. So I spin this around, sorry, I'm off the tripod. You can see I just clamped, I, I was more concerned about the seam on the outside. This will get filled and all sculpted in in here. Um, it fits pretty good on the base. Again, you're trying to get eight pieces because you got four on the battle cat, four on the base. You're trying to get eight pieces all to align, which is really, really hard. So I've got it pretty good. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is once I get all everything kind of, all the seams and all the, that fixed, I'll get the battle cat head on the base and I'll probably do some putty work down here because there's a decent gap down there, but uh, I just may rekey battle cat on the base in general just so it's a better fit after getting all this on. But again, you're trying to get eight pieces all aligned and with resin, uh, and luckily this resin that Bonnie uses is actually really flexible. I'm actually put a lot of, I'm actually gonna put quite a bit of clamping power on it without breaking anything. It flexes pretty good. So, um, but we're getting there. Uh, so we'll keep going. Okay, continuing on with He-Man. Uh, so this will be the, actually the first full day I put in on this guy. Last week I had, uh, um, the beginning of the week was just kind of wrapping up, getting Judy packed and getting some stuff packed and shipped out. I had a photo shoot a couple days of the week, so I didn't put a lot of work on this during the week, but I have been working on it on and off over the weekend, the weekend, and like I said, uh, when I just left off, we got the Battle Cat head put together, four pieces there, four pieces on the bottom of the base. I got it fitting as good as I can with clamps and epoxy. So I'm gonna put this to the side for now because I'm gonna look at some of these other pieces um, as far as what we're gonna put together before we do any painting or anything. So, uh, luckily, the, the rest of the stuff kind of fits, fits much better, but it doesn't mean I don't have some work to do ahead of me. So. For example, let's work on He-Man's upper torso. So now I have to kind of decide, what am I gonna to glue together and um, what am I gonna keep separate for mask for painting later? I think my best bet for He-Man is to go ahead and glue the arms on and fix any little small gaps. So there's some little gaps around the edge here between his, his uh, chest and his armor. So I think I'm gonna glue the arms on and get those fixed with a little body filler. So before I do that, I have to sand. I've gotta clean up the support marks. So let's see what we just do with the sanding sponge. So again, a lot of this work in progress here is gonna be just a prep. So I'm gonna get rid of these support marks as much as possible. I don't, we don't see these, but this is where it keys in, and this is where it can cause some interference with the fit. And as I sand, I can see like a print line there. Um, I hopefully it won't show up when I paint. We'll see. Yeah, there are some print lines on this thing. It's not like this print isn't perfect. It's really good. Um, it's got some print artifacts here and there I gotta deal with. More in the base so, than anything just because the parts are so damn big. And that's all, when the, the printer's lifting those huge pieces, it's a lot of weight. And there's a lot of cross section and that creates suction forces on the, the FEF sheet, which is where you tend to get more print lines and stuff like that. And also I wanna, um, I'm gonna epoxy, I like to use epoxy on stuff. I don't like to use super glue just because super glue is very brittle. If something's bumped, there's a good chance it could um, snap. So I'm gonna use epoxy to glue this all together. And then uh, hopefully I'll get a little bit of ooze out and I can use that to kind of help fill the gas. But otherwise I'll just use a little Bondo. And I'll show you that's relatively quick process if we get it right the first time. Okay, so. Clean that up pretty good. That's his left arm. There are some uh, support marks here. I'm gonna scuff this up just a little bit. 
And I'm not really sanding. I just want to give the epoxy something decent to stick to. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna get the top, the upper torso together, arms and everything. I'll leave the head separate um, until after I paint because the seam on the head is really well hidden by his beard and hair. So I don't have to really do anything as far as like gap filling there because you don't see it. So that's perfect. I don't have to do anything there. I do have to clean up the support marks on the head, which are underneath here on the hair and stuff. But as far as it going on the body, I can leave this separate for paint because you don't see this the seam. <coughs> But here, uh, I'll put one arm in, I'll glue it, I'll clamp it really good. And then once this dries, I'll go in with some filler and I'll clean up this uh, seam a little bit just so it's a cleaner, uh, cleaner fit. Between the armor and the arms and stuff, so. And we got a little support mark here underneath this arm. Had a good video chat with my client on this yet, uh, last week, be uh, right before it started. So, um, I think he said this is the first time he's hired a painter to do something. And uh, he saw the um, Predator I did, and that's kind of what prompted him to contact me to do this piece for him, which is nice to hear. So, like right here is a little print line of the skin. I'm going to give it a very light sanding, see if I can get rid of it. I don't want to lose the skin detail. There's some skin detail here, not much, but there is a little bit. So I'm gonna get rid of that a little bit. Sometimes I just, if there's a print line and I'm gonna lose a ton of detail, I just leave it in because I can, many times, unless you dry brush, it won't, you won't see it after paint. And even on, even on some of the really high-end stuff that I get from China, even on some owner's pieces, I'll, I'll have print lines. And um, you really don't see them until you go in and do like dry brushing. That's when they pop out. And then you get like, okay, I can't dry brush that. I gotta just let it, I just gotta airbrush whatever I'm gonna do. Because dry brushing brings out any little surface imperfections in a heartbeat. Let me get out some of my sanding sticks. So I'm gonna sand on some of these parts for a while. And I'll come back. There's no reason for me to show you sanding at nauseam. Um, that's what a lot of this morning is going to be. It's just sanding. I'm going to work on cleaning up all these parts. And then we'll work on glue the stuff together. So once I get everything clean, cleaned up, I'll come back. All right, so one of the challenges of cleaning any 3D print or even just garage kits in general is being able to get sandpaper and sand into tight, tight areas. So like... <clears throat> The way this was supported, which is the best way to do it, was from underneath here. So all the support marks were underneath here on this, on his like when you call it the loincloth and all this fur and stuff. <clears throat> and I can't get like a sanding sponge in there. So what I did is I glued a bunch of pieces of sanding sponge to sticks. I labeled the grit, and now I can get in here and I can get way up in, underneath his uh, skirt, and I can sand pretty easily. And with it being a sanding sponge, I can conform to these shapes pretty easily. So I'm not going to create flat spots. Again, you're not going to see any of this while he's sitting, but we want to make sure that it's, you know, we're going to clean this up as best we can. So even if my client wanted to take him off the sand and look up underneath the skirt, it looks clean and, and smooth and everything's been prepped correctly. So that's what I've been doing here. I've been working on this, just kind of getting the support marks off all this fur. Um, and it, it's, it's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the legs onto this part. Um, another thing is on these legs, um, there are some print lines, and you really don't see them until you start turning this into the light. So I'm not sure, not sure if they'll show up, but I can see some print lines here. So I'm going to do this very lightly with an ultra fine or super fine sand, just very lightly going over the surface and trying to reduce those as much as possible. So when I sand, you can see it right there it comes up. Um, I'm hoping primer will fill that in enough to where I don't have to sand too much. Again, luckily it's in the spot that once he's all together, you're not gonna see it. Um, it's really not showing up on top here. It's more on the bottom side. Um, so as long as they don't air brush, dry brush, those should be fine. Um, Primer should take care of most of it. 
again, this was supported right here. So this is the build plate here. And as it's going up and down, um, you know, releases from the FEP, it might shift a little bit. So I, I get those two in our print too. So I'm not sure how, I, I don't know how to reduce those. I mean, I just, you know, the last print I did for uh, a client, I just put on really slow settings and everything but the base turned out just about perfect. The, perfect, the base had a ton of print lines I had to take care of because it was so big, huge cross section, huge suction forces and stuff. So yeah, I don't really know how to personally take care of that or get, make those not happen, but they're there. So I'm hoping primer's gonna take care of that. But I am gonna glue the legs on and uh, again, I'll, I'll have more masking to do, but I want to be able to glue this on and fill this gap. Because if I painted this and then glued it on, I have a huge gap there and I have to fill the gap and I have to touch up paint. So again, you have to kind of weigh, like, what's the best way to do this? Is it better to create more masking and all that stuff? And in my opinion, it's always better to do as much, do all the prep work and putty work and everything there is to do before you do any painting because Nothing worse than having something painted the way you like. Go get putty, do putty work, get putty on things you don't want putty on and mess up other areas. So yeah, I'll create some more masking in the end, but um, it, it's just a better uh, attack. So what I'm gonna do is while I hold this leg in a place, I'm gonna actually put, I'm just gonna hold the torso on to make sure that the leg is in the right position because his arm rests on this leg. There's a little indentation in the sculpt on the top of his leg where his arm goes. Um, so we're just going to kind of hold that in the place while the epoxy cures for, you know, it only takes about this five minute epoxy after about five minutes, it's, you can let go, but it's fine. So we're going to hold that in the place while the epoxy dries, um, to make sure it's in the right position. I do have the arms epoxied in now. And what I did is I made sure that the gaps in the bottom were, uh, sorry, about my, sorry about my dog. She's freaking out. Um, my wife must have gone outside. She's freaking out. We have a new puppy. Anyway, so when I put the arms on, I made sure. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I had to pause and yell the dog. Anyway, so when I put the arms on, I made sure the gaps at the bottom were as close as possible. That's really hard to get putty into. Uh, I still have a little bit of work, but then uh, you'll see the gaps here along the armor and there. I'll have to fill in uh, with some two part epoxy and I'll just hopefully I'll fill it in and smooth it out with a Q tip and that's it. I don't want to do any sanding or anything. So those are on. So let's go ahead and um, I'll get the legs glued on because I got the support marks just about cleaned up on this part. I'll get the legs on and then I'll work on the boots. The boots will probably, um, I'll probably leave separate, put them separately. I don't think there's any reason to glue those on now. Um, yeah, it just makes it a bigger piece. I can, I, there's nothing, these fit really, really well. So I'll just keep these separate and there's no gap around the leg. Sorry, my phone stopped recording because of an amber alert, so I'm not sure where I left off. Anyway, I was saying um, the boots are gonna leave separate because when I put these together, there's no gaps. So as long as there aren't gaps between pieces, um, after gluing, I'll leave them separate. Same thing with like the, the gauntlets and the hands. I can glue these in and they fit really well. There's no gaps. So I'm not worried about gluing these in and filling gaps. So I'm gonna get the legs on uh the 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 waist those will be glued on and then um we'll come back after that okay so filling holes for 3d printers lots of ways to do it this is kind of the way i've been doing lately because it just seems to be faster for me is i take a little piece of plot plate really flexible this is just thin plastic this may be a little over kind of well, a lot of people don't do but i do this because it's quick. I glue it to the end of a little stick. Okay. And then I take it and it's flexible enough to go into the hole. Make sure that, sure that glue's dry. It just takes a second. Like this. And then what I basically do is I just pull this up to the, to here. I throw some more super glue on it. Now what this does, this gives me something Put a couple drops of glue in there. Hit with some kicker. Now what this does, as you can see, I did the one on the toe. Um, it gives something the putty to, to sit on top of. Because if you try to just fill the hole, sometimes, a lot of times I'll use the baking soda and super glue, which is probably what I'll do here. 
And I can just break the stick off or cut it off. But now my putty has something, it's not gonna fall through the hole. So it's just rather than you're trying to fight gravity and stuff. So for bigger holes like this, that's what I do. I just, I put a little piece of plastic in it. And then now I have something for the putty to, the putty's not gonna fall through the hole, I'm not gonna be fighting that. So that's what I do. I'll do that on the holes in the bottom of the base too before I do the bondo and stuff. So I'm not, put, I'm not filling all the holes, only the holes that I would see um, after he's together. So obviously under the bottom of the foot, the bottom of the base, all that stuff, those holes will all get filled. But I do that and I can fill the putty and sand it smooth and we're good to go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna, like I said before, I'm just gonna take a little uh, this is baby powder slash talc powder, some super glue. And I'm just gonna make a little kind of putty here. Oops, I missed the, I missed the hole. And I'm just gonna fill that in. And this will, depending on how much uh, talc you have, or soup, baby powder you have, it will determine how fast it kicks off. The more baby powder, the faster this kicks off. Cause like, it's like an accelerant, but it's a little better than just using, so you can just hear it and you can see it just kind of, now it's gonna leave some pinholes, which isn't the end of the world. We'll take care of that. I actually put way too much in there because now it's going to take me a minute to sand it. But, but this is a quick way to fill a hole because it dries quickly. You're not waiting for putty to dry. It dries within seconds. And the more uh, the more baby powder you have in there, the easier it sands too. It's kind of add, like, acts like a thickener for the super glue. And, But I want some pinholes to fill, which isn't, which isn't at the end of the world, because I typically do anyway after filling something. So you just go in here, and obviously, with different grits of files and sandpaper and sand that smooth. And then finish up with like just like the finest wool work. It's like Wonder Grid sandpaper. And there you go. That hole's filled, except for going back and doing a little spot pretty to fill to fill up the uh, pinholes. But there you go. That's how I fill holes uh, a lot of times. On the bottom of the base, I'll do the the plastic trick with the hole. You know, fill it from the back side, and they'll use bondo to fill those because they're big. Those holes are like this. They're big. So he's, uh, and plus the bottom is all wavy and stuff from all the print artifacts. So that's gonna get all smoothed out and sand it smooth. So it's a, a flat surface, but that's how I feel holes about this size. Okay, so I've got the basic cleanup done on all the parts. I've gone through and sanded them all. Gotten the supports marks off as much as I, I can tell for now. I'll see more when I do the primer. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through and start re-keying some of these parts. So, well actually all of them. So the keys in the base are relatively large compared to uh, the parts that go in those areas. So like the only one that fits without really wobbling is this one, Cyclops. So I may just leave that in because it sits down and that, that's fine. Um, but all these other ones, the ones that's the most important root is really this one. Uh, Cause this is where Orko um, keys into and he's got a, he sits way up high. So this has got a lot of kind of balancing and weight to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rekey um, the ram head into the base because see how much it wobbles? We don't want that. We want this to be a tight fit. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in there. I'm going to sand the inside of this key a little bit. Uh, I'm going to kind of push it inside here for a second. So I have some space. Uh, 
so yeah, so this, uh, from what I can tell, um, just like on the beast kit I did from Bond, the his support settings are really good. They leave really minimal damage, but you know, when you do the initial cleanup, it's really hard to see if you've got everything. So once I've got, once I'm, I'm like, okay, I got all the initial cleanup done. I think it's a bath, I think it's primer, and that'll tell me where I gotta go in and do some more work. Cause I never get it right. You never, it's never done the first time. There's always sanding and filling to do after the first round. So anyway, let's go in here and clean this out. I'll show you one on camera because it's going to be the rest of the same for the other ones. I need my Vaseline. I found a ton of other videos. I need the body filler. I'm just going to use Bondo for this. I actually have a gallon of it. <laughs> okay, so Bondo body, just a body filler. It doesn't matter. Bondo is just a brand. Um, Actually, this is Evercoat. Sorry, this is Evercoat body filler. It's not Bondo. So what we're going to do first is we're going to put Vaseline all around this ram head on the key. Yeah, like that. yeah I think there's these epoxy brushes. Might be a little... So I'm just putting some Vaseline on this key. And anywhere that the Bondo may was on, I don't worry about getting Vaseline anywhere on this because it's all going to get washed later with some um, lacquer thinner, soap, and water. I just want to make sure that if I get any ooze out, well, I will get ooze out, that any of the ooze out won't stick to this. Or if it does, that's easy to get off. So we put quite a bit on everywhere, just like that. Okay, so now we got Vaseline on this part. Let's put that to the side for now. And we're gonna get our body filler going here. Okay. This is just a really, really messy part of this whole process is all this prep work. And I've done a lot of prepping on kits lately between the Judy and um, another print I did for someone. You know, this, my work area is really, really messy. Okay, so we're just gonna get a little filler. Ow. Let's use a popsicle stick. I don't need a ton. Okay, it's gonna be this guy right here. I think I'm also going to, um, Okay, I gotta use Axel. Because what I'll do is once it sets up, I'll take the the head out of the base and I'll trim up the excess. Okay, for hardener, it's just this is the color really doesn't matter. This came with blue hardener. Now, the more hardener you put in, the quicker it's going to set up. So I don't want to put a ton in here because I don't want it to set up too fast. Probably just enough. The brand Evercoat, I actually prefer to Bondo. It seems to be a smoother, um, a little more viscous. It sands easier too than the Bondo brand. It is a little more expensive, but I like it. Okay, so I sanded that key a little bit, cleaned it out. You wanna, you know, when you do this, you wanna kinda push and fold this in, just helps reduce air bubbles. But they really care about our ropes in the key. Okay, now we're gonna come in here and basically fill this key with filler. Again, we're gonna put the head on there, and it's probably, yeah, so you always mix up more than I need just to be safe, but I have too much. So we fill it up, and now we put the head on. And I'm going to hold it in the place while this cures because I want this to be at this angle. Okay, so I got quite a bit of ooze out, which is fine. So I'm going to hold this here 
until this till this bondo gets rubbery. I don't want it fully cured because what it does it creates a vacuum. So once this cures, I'll pull it out and come back. Okay, so I waited till this was uh, just uh, about I would say 50, 60 percent cured. I pulled the head out and it was just at the right time because it was actually kind of hard to get out. Um, you let it cure all the way, it's a good chance you're not going to get it out because even with the Vaseline, it just creates a vacuum in it. Um, it's hard to get out. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to clean off uh, this key a little bit with some lacquer dinner. Get the excess filler off. Okay, before this gets 100% cured, I'm gonna go and trim off this excess uh, filler. And now I'll sand the rest, but I can trim a good portion of it off. But I'll wait till it dries 100% before I start sanding. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so once this dries, I'll sand off the excess, and this should be a nice tight fit. So I'm gonna do this to all the other parts too that are really loosey-goosey, and hopefully we'll get tight fits. Okay, so after rekeying the ram's head, it fits nicely, that it doesn't wobble, and when I put Orco on, it doesn't wanna fall out. I still have to rekey. A problem I'm thinking I'm gonna do is probably glue Orco to the ram's head and make this one part um, and ship it that way. We'll see, because this is kind of a little, this is like the kind of most wonky area as far as like things really needing to fit and balance. <clears throat> so, and also since Orco is uh, hollow, I can't put a magnet down, I don't have room for a magnet anyway. So the ram's head is solid. So um, I might do a pin into the head from Orco to the head. Ideally, I'd like to do a pin from Orco to the head to the base, but it doesn't line up that way. So we'll see. Um, I'm thinking about adding like a, a 332nd inch rod to that, to the bottom of Orco. Let's see what would fit there nicely. 332nd be too big. Actually, you know, that'd be perfect. So I think I might do that. Let's work on that real quick. Close up this body filler because it stinks. The fumes are bad. I haven't rekeyed anything else. I was, just, I was like, like I said, I was just going to show you the one uh, part. Now, if we're doing this, since we're drilling a print, you got to be careful. I just can't go right to 332nd inch. I'll crack it out, especially since it's hollow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of do what I normally do with um, pinning. We'll start with like a um, start with um, this is a three thirty. This is a, I'm sorry. Use a five thirty second inch brass rod. I'm gonna use. But let's start off with like a three thirty second inch hole. So I'm gonna do that in the bottom of Orco here. Now what I can do is I can use some blue tack. And put this in the ramp. So I'm not sure if this key goes all the way down. So I put the blue tack in the head. Put Orco on top. It looks like it fits down there all the way, so I can take most of that out. 
sometimes these keys the male end doesn't go all the way down to the female end so you have to use quite a bit of blue tack but i think this actually meet up I put some blue tack in there put orco in give it a squeeze like so ah. I'll take some of this blue tack out not too much Just need a little bit down there. I guess they meet up pretty good. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now you see down in there, I've got a, a little peg of blue, a little blue peg. That's where that hole's gonna go. So that's the 232nd. Okay. So now we just work our way up. So that's a 332nd inch. Let's go to an eighth inch. print and you really got to kind of be careful. So the next one, 964s. And then 530 seconds. That's what we're going to use for a rod to give this guy some support. Actually, I'm going through the roof of the ram's mouth, which is not the end of the world. I just got to be cognizant of that, um, that the rod isn't too long. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, I went through. Actually, I might just go ahead and, do I see that? So if I go, if I keep going with that rod, yeah, I don't know. Ideally, I'd like the rod to go into the base, but it would then it, would, it wouldn't work. So, all right. So now I'm gonna get some 332nd inch rod here. And I want this to go up in the orco as far as I can. Because I'm gonna try to um, putty this rod in. Because it goes up, it's like this whole part's hollow. So I'm gonna try to um, do some putty. Um, like the two part epoxy putty and putty that in so it's solid. Okay, so this rod's a little long. I really, actually, I really don't care if it comes out the mouth. I'd rather have it solid. So you cut some of this off, not a lot. I could do that with these guys. <laughs> maybe, maybe an inch, let's see. Oh. 
and hopefully this lines up and it'll key in there nicely. I get that peg to glue into Orco right there. That's a good fit. That's kind of where it needs to be. Okay. That's going to want to stay in the head, of course, because it's solid and So what I think we're going to do is go ahead and scuff this up. I'm going to put some Vaseline in the key of the, of the head just to keep myself from gluing or go in, which I don't want to do right now, obviously. So let's do that. Let's get some Vaseline. I'm going to put some Vaseline in here. Yeah, and I think we're gonna use some five minute epoxy to glue this rod in. Okay, do that. Okay, let's mix up a little epoxy. So give me some time to wiggle around and get it where I want it to be. And the Vaseline will keep the epoxy from sticking because it might want to run out a little bit. But I need some working time. So we're using epoxy instead of super glue. And it'll just give me a stronger bond. Right, mix this up. So I think uh, what I'll do is I'll, um, so as far as this work in progress goes, it's gonna be really long. Again, another long work in progress, just like the Judy ones where those are all like two hours long. And very much like Judy, this is probably most of the work on this will probably be in the prep. <laughs> the paint on Judy actually didn't, wasn't, didn't take as long as I thought it would. It took about four days, really. epoxy into this key. Let's see if I can do that before. to run down that peg. Yeah, perfect, okay. Now, before this kicks off, I need to get it in the head and get it lined up.
Okay, just like that. Now he does spin around a little bit in this key, which is not that big a deal. I'm not gonna worry about that, to be honest. I probably won't rekey or go in this head. As long as he sits in there, because I don't see. Okay, so I'm gonna let this, I'm actually let this epoxy pretty much fully cure because I need that peg to solidify in Orco and hopefully the epoxy will keep it from <laughs> gluing or the uh, Vaseline will keep it from gluing to the ram's head. It should because I didn't, I didn't have any ooze out, but we'll see. I'll come back after I get this apart. Okay, so I got all the parts rekeyed and fitting well. So the only part I didn't rekey is this uh, Cyclops part because it fits in there and gravity helps it really well. Merman, I think it's this guy. Perfect. Uh, I forgot this guy's name, but I was gonna put a pin in there, but I was having a problem getting that to fit, but it fits just fine. I did go ahead and put a pin in um, this guy because the key is so small, even though I refitted, it was still wanting to kind of dip down a little bit. So I put a, key, uh, a pin in there and that fits really well. Nice tight fit. We got the Rams head and Orco with a nice big pin in Orco. So now that can go in and out easily and he'll be nicely supported. I might, we'll see. Uh, I might put a pin in the Rams head. I don't know. It seems like it's holding really well right now. But um, I don't know. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on Orco a little bit. Um, I've, like I said before, I've done the main cleanup on all the parts. They, well, the initial cleanup. <clears throat> and Orco's head fits really well. That's just going to get glued in later. So I don't have anything to do there as far as keying or seam work because there's no gaps. It fits really well, so that's nothing to do there. His left arm fits really well. I can put that on, I think, after I paint because he's holding this skull. And if I glue that on, it'll be hard to, to uh, paint that all together. So I think I'm okay gluing that arm on after paint. I think that'll work. Um, but this other arm, it's got a little bit of a gap going around there and I don't like it. So I'm thinking, and also it fits in a very specific way. It's got a little indentation here on his body. So when you have the arms in, he's uh, got his claws on that skull. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and, I really don't wanna glue this arm on. I think I'm gonna save that until after paint. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and glue this arm on and do the little gap filling right there. So it's very minor, but I wanna take care of that. And that way I know it's in the right spot and I don't have to deal with that after paint. So we're gonna do that and we'll see how what time it is today. And then uh, that may be it for the day, just kind of getting things fitting and rekeyed because tomorrow I'll have to clean up my workbench. Tomorrow will be um, really kind of working on all the seams of the base and everything and start doing the putty work on all that stuff. So uh, let me get this done and then we'll, I'll probably do some gap filling on Orco and He-Man today. All right, let's do some gap filling. I'm gonna use my two-part epoxy. I've been using this Polygem Easy Sculpt. Like I said in the past, it's like Aves. Um, works the same way. Mix two parts together, put it on, sculpt it, do whatever. So I'm gonna mix a little parts of this up at a time. I've got a little um, alcohol here in a cup to um, clean up. So I hope I can do this. And I won't have you sanding in the end. I won't know until I prime it, but I was gonna do this with Bondo, but this, this Bondo tends to dry a little too fast. So I'd rather have more working time and just wait till tomorrow to do the cleanup. Okay, so I always like to keep the lids separate and everything separate, so got part A, part B, and unfortunately they're the same, basically the same color, so it's kinda of hard to tell if everything's mixed up well. So I kinda of keep everything separate. I don't need a lot of this because let me put this lid on before I dry. Before I forget. Yeah, let me put the Bondo lid back on really good. Okay. I'm gonna get a little bit of part. This is part B actually right here. So a little piece, a little part part B. Little part A, 
mix them equal amounts. Get a little more, just a little more part A. And this will dry overnight. Yeah, today's goal is to kind of get everything rekeyed and kind of get the gap filling done on He Man. The base is going to take a lot of work to work on all the seams and everything, but I want to kind of get everything else squared away. Um, so I get the gap filling done on He Man today. I got um, one or two holes I've got to fill on Orco. So gap filling on He Man, gap filling on Orco's arm and fill those remaining holes in Orco. That's a full day. So, then I got that stuff dry overnight. And then, uh, tomorrow, it'll be really full steam ahead on the base again. Like I said, last week I put in, um, I have to go back and add it up, eight to 10 hours, just getting the base fitted together. Maybe a little longer, I've got it written down somewhere. I don't know how many hours I put in each day. I had to go out and use like the power sander to sand it smooth, try to get things to fit the best I could, epoxy it, and it's just, it's a challenging thing to do. Okay, so here we go. We got this mixed up. I'm gonna get a little, take the top of the can, that's why they're all messy. All right, you take a little bit of this, I'm gonna take the glove off because I don't want to get this all over the piece. Can avoid it. Okay. I need to get um let's go put tools. Which one do I want to use? Put that one. There it is. I need to go buy some more of these sculpting tools because these have been neglected. Okay, so we're going to put this in there. And fill this gap. I don't care what it looks like to begin with. I just want to get putty in there. This stuff cures fully in eight hours. And about 40, 30, 45 minutes, I'll feel to start to set up. So I'll just mix a little bit up at a time. I have to push it down in that gap as much as I can. If it's too messy, just kind of get it in there right now. Another reason I wanted to use, it, use this instead of Bondo, because the Bondo would kick off too fast and I'd be like in trouble. if you dampen your tools a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna take a Q-tip. This is alcohol, you can use water or alcohol, but I've not got alcohol right now. We're gonna clean this up. I just work a small area at a time. I don't try to do the whole thing at once. It's a little hard to do that sometimes. All right. So there you go. That part of the gap looks really good. So 
So that's the idea. You put some in, kind of get just get it on there, and then clean it up with a damp Q-tip. And then you get out your gap fill. So I'm going to do that all the way around the arms and legs and Orko's arm. And when I'm done, I'll come back. Okay, so I've gone through and I have uh, did the putty work on He-Man's arms. Looking good. Uh, I filled the hole down here just in case I wanted to put a magnet in the torso later. I'm thinking I'm going to glue him together, but I don't know. So I went ahead and filled the, that hole. I did the same thing on his waist. I filled the two holes down there because I want to put a magnet. I'm not sure. My guess is I'm going to glue them to get together later, but anyway, if I want to put a magnet, I can now. Uh, fill in the gaps between the fur and his legs, same underneath here. This will get a light sanding later. I meant to do a little more Bondo work on this leg. It's The gap was a little wonky, but we'll see. Um, but that's looking pretty good. Uh, what else? I did the gap filling on Orko's arm here, so that's good. I filled in these holes down here with the, I filled this whole key with epoxy putty. And there's a hole down here. I feel like I'll let this dry overnight uh, before I can sand that. So that's good. And what else did I do? Um, oh, I filled the holes on the horn for Battle Cat. Let these dry overnight, sand those down, and then we're good to go there. So I'm going to call this work in progress done because I, I got to wait for stuff to dry. So tomorrow I'll sand all the that putty down. Um, and then I'm going to start working on all the seams of the base which will be fun. Lots of grinding, sculpting, all that fun stuff. So uh, stay tuned for the next one. It's just going to be more prep and that kind of fun stuff. I also filled in uh, some pinholes on the bottom of the feet. So we got to wait for that to sand. So I just used the putty, extra putty that I mixed over for filling in some pinholes and stuff that I had because why waste all this putty? Might as well use it up. Uh, but there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Bye.